Andy Price with the intro of the starter. Southern Conference game between the East Tennessee State University Buccaneers and the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga Moccasins. Here are your starting lineups. First for the Buccaneers. At forward, a 6'4 senior from Denmark, South Carolina. Number four, Rodney English. At forward, a 6'3 senior from Greenville, Tennessee. Number 34, Marty Story. At center, a 6'11 senior from Charleston, West Virginia. Number 11, Greg Dennis. At guard, a 5'11 junior from Martinsville, Virginia, number three, Jason Niblett. And at guard, a 6'4 senior from Castlewood, Virginia, number 24, Calvin Talford. The coach of the Buccaneers is Alan LaForce. Now, get on your feet for the mask. At forward, a 6'5 junior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Number 44, Bart Redden. And forward, a 6'6 senior from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Number four, Lovert Street. At center, a 6'7 senior from Louisville, Kentucky. Number three, Keith Nelson. At guard, a 6'3 junior from London, West Virginia, number 11, Kelly Sutton. And at guard, a 6'0 junior from Louisville, Kentucky, number 10, Tim Brooks. The head coach of the Moccasins is Mac McCarthy. The officials tonight, James Owen, Maurice Everett, and Rick Hartzell. Mac McCarthy's won 10 out of 16 meetings with East Tennessee State, but the big one was a couple of weeks ago when the Mox won 88-82 in Johnson City. We're going to be back with the opening tap right after this. I left my country, Lithuania, to come to this. This is the 44th meeting between these two state schools. The Moccasins lead the series 23 to 20. East Tennessee did a lot of catching up last year with three victories, including a semifinal win in the Southern Conference Tournament. By the way, that will be March 6th, 7th, and 8th at the Asheville Civic Center, Asheville, North Carolina. And Jeff Cave from the Southern Conference will be joining us at halftime to talk about it. But that's 20 minutes away on the game clock. Marty Story gets the start for East Tennessee as you look at the starters. And we were thinking that Tim Brooks, who has been sick this past week, would not start, maybe might not play for UT Chattanooga, but he is playing. Your officials, James Owen, Rick Hartzell, and Mari Seppard, your referee. Randy, you have a way of getting well, Tim Brooks, especially before a great big game like this one here tonight in Chattanooga. Dennis at 6'11", Nelson at 6'7", and it's controlled by East Tennessee State. I predict the first five minutes of this game will be kind of sloppy with the big crowd, the pressure, and all that's at stake here in the game. East Tennessee State in the motion offense. UT Chattanooga opens in a man-to-man. 11,000 fans here to witness this one, and the Bucks turn it over. Great pressure by UT Chattanooga. That was good pressure that time, cutting off the passing lane as you watch the general right there, Allen LaForce, but... Uh, you started to have English go back door, and that's what created the turnover. Bart Redden has the ball for UTC. They look for Nelson, and Dennis is on him. They go to Nelson. Stolen away, Jason Niblett's got it for East Tennessee State. And English walked with it, and Ron, you were right. It's a little sloppy early. Three turnovers, two by East Tennessee in the first 47 seconds of the ball game. Randy, I tell you, I, I didn't coach 10 years at the college level for nothing. The one thing I observed is when you have a game like this, with all the pressure, everything on the line in the crowd, it tends to be sloppy, especially in the opening minutes. Bart Redden misses the three. Dennis gets the rebound. At 6-11, Greg Dennis averaging almost seven a game. Here's Talford, misses the three, and it's Keith Nelson corrected. That's Lavert Reach with a rebound. East Tennessee State has Talford on Brooks instead of the point guard, Nipley. They're really going to pressure that perimeter, and they're leaving Nelson to go one-on-one -on -one inside against Nelson, and there you get the charge. Ah, 
offensive foul as Greg Dennis had good defensive positioning for East Tennessee. He drew the charge from Keith Nelson. We're going to see pretty good play in there. Oh, yeah. Nelson initiated the contact. Great defense inside by the big man, Greg. And, uh, you know, Greg Dennis, we said, had to get off the blocks real quickly. He's got to be a menace inside for uh, Allen LaForce. No score. We played almost a minute and a half. Dennis with the ball. English fires a three. Yes. And East Tennessee is up 3-0. Randy, you're going to watch the inside play. They're going to give Nelson the inside. They're not going to double down because at East Tennessee State, when Chattanooga won the game, actually Chattanooga did a great job on the perimeter, and the guards really beat them. So tonight, East Tennessee State is going to cut off the perimeter. They're going to let Nelson work inside one-on-one -on -one against Greg Dennis. 3 nothing Buccaneers. 18-14 to go in the first half. Tim Brooks runs the offense for UT Chattanooga. Great point guard. Here's Nelson again in trouble. Goes over Dennis and missed the shot. Talford with a rebound. Cleared out quickly. Here's English. Good job by Brooks of cutting off English in transition. That's where he's dangerous. English again. Missed it. Long rebound goes to Tim Brooks. And there's a reach-in foul by Rodney English of East Tennessee State. His first Teams first. That's not the kind of foul that uh, you see Allen LaForce walking away, shaking his head, <laughs> not very happy. Mac tonight sporting that nice little uh, tie. Gene McCarthy's been shopping for Mac. We talked about him early in the year, not really setting any fashion trends, but he's looking pretty sharp here tonight, Chattanooga. Oh. Sutton all the way in, missed the layup. Nelson missed the follow, blocked and fouled, and English is quickly picked up his second foul, and that could be a really big factor in the ball game. That is a big key. Be interesting to see what happens right now. You're going to see uh, Nelson working on the boards and the foul right there, Rodney English underneath the goal. Now they've got to make a decision: do they leave him alone? He wants to stay in, or do they take him out and uh, buy some time? As the uh, Buccaneers are pondering the decision right now, Allen Force with his assistant. Keith Nelson will be at the free throw line for UTC, a 67% foul shooter, and he misses the front end of two shots. He'll get one more. I think they made the decision. Trezell Silvers is going to come into the game. They're going to give Nelson uh, a little different look now as Rodney English goes to the bench. Nelson gets one more. It's a 3-0 East Tennessee State lead on an English three-pointer. It's 3-1 three now. English had 20, what, 24 points in the first main meeting between these two. But Coach Mac McCarthy told me, he said, we made him work for him. Yes. He had a hard time to get those points, and the Mox won the ball game. Niblett for three, missed it. Oh, Talford, Talford, skies, the follow-up. What an athletic move by oh. Calvin Talford. Oh, he goes up and gets the offensive glass, does a little hang time to get the bucket. He's there. Kelly Sutton down low to Nelson, spinning on Dennis. Nelson got the bucket. Well, we're watching a real coaching strategy now. We're watching East Tennessee State playing one-on-one -on -one inside with Nelson. And he's a pretty good player, but they make a decision to play him that way. Talford pulls up from the top of the key. Missed it. Keith Nelson gets the rebound. It's a 5-3. East Tennessee State lead. Mox look to tie here. Tim Brooks hits Kelly Sutton. Down low on the block to Nelson. Missed it. Dennis gets the rebound. There gonna be some kids gonna be tired before the first five minutes. Substitution in the game. How people play off the bench are also a factor. Hardy Story with the ball. Talford, right corner. Dennis from way outside. Missed it. Story got the rebound. For East Tennessee State, they'll reset it. Dennis, one-hander, missed everything. Rebound, Levert Greets. Box again, look the tie. He really didn't know how open he was when he made that little move. Brooks off the left hand. He's fouled going in by East Tennessee's Calvin Talford. That'll be his first. And team foul number three against the Buccaneers as Ron Wilson checks in for the box. We're going to see a great penetration by Brooks. And there you see the little bump by Calvin Talford. Great penetration. And any time you penetrate, there's uh, Ron Wilson. They call him Meech. Meet Wilson, and they call, you know, some of these other players like Sutton and Brooks the potatoes. <laughs> Wilson played at East Ridge High.
after that at Walter State. In fact, seven of the 11 players for UT Chattanooga are junior college players. Some coaches have the philosophy that they go to the junior college ranks, and Mac McCarthy's been very successful doing that. Brooks ties the game with two free throws, and before Mac McCarthy, Murray Arnold did a good job recruiting the junior college players at Chattanooga. Time on the floor, 15.03. No, it's 16.03. Niblett on the left side. We're tied for the first time of the ball game. Niblett inside. Offensive goaltending. No basket. Frizzell Silvers was up above the rim. Now we're going to take that time with 15.52 to go in the first half. It's a 5-5 game at the UTC Arena. We'll be right back in just a moment. Silvers right now on an offensive boards go up and interfere with the basketball on the right side right over there I believe if he leaves it alone I believe there's enough rim up there it's going to guide the ball right through the cylinder we talked about this crowd there's a good reason UTC draws well here in 10 years in the UTC arena they're 127 and 24 overall at 65 and 9 at the Southern Conference Levert Reese misses this one badly Barton Renton with a follow Kept alive, the long rebound goes to Calvin Talford. The Mox missed about three opportunities to take the lead. Niblett for three, bang, a three-pointer by Jason Niblett. In transition, you got to know where that little point guard here, Jason Niblett, can stroke the three. And that time, in the transition, the pass back to Jason Niblett, he drains it. Kelly Sutton is in the ball game now. Larry Stewart, the Mox are going into their bench now with Wilson and Stewart. And Sutton, three guys. Wilson works against Greg Dennis. See, Brooks probably in and out of the game all night because of the fact he's been sick all week. That's a good Rejected oh. by Dennis, but a goaltending call. Well, that was real close. That was real close to being a great block. But you're going to see right here, good penetration. Anytime you penetrate, you're going to make some good things happen. Let's see right there. I believe that ball, I, I tell you, I don't know going to see from another angle right here. Can't tell from there. That's, that's very close. That's real good defense anyway, even if it is a basket interference. Just showing your presence in there is a good sign for the Buccaneers. East Tennessee has hit two three-pointers, and they have a one-point lead at 8-7. English has one. Niblett has one. Marty Story back to Niblett, who runs the offense. Here's Talford. Dog by Stewart. Talford. Missed the two, rebound by Tim Brooks, who's back in for UTC. Down on the block to Keith Nelson. Good kick out right there. Red for three, it missed. Nelson got the rebound, missed it, kept alive. Larry Stewart hauls it in, the box reset. Inside they go to Nelson again, he got it. UTC has its first lead at 9-8. Where you're going to see if Keith Nelson plays inside like that one-on-one, -on -one, you're going to find out if there's anybody that can really guard him. We set up at BMI. We didn't think anybody one-on-one -on -one could guard him, but he Tennessee State's taking it right to him. And Greg Dennis just weaved himself around Nelson quickly and gave the Bucks the lead back. Well, when you're playing so hard on the offensive end like Nelson is, it's going to affect you on the defensive end. And right now, they're just saying, we're going to let you have that inside shot, Mr. Nelson. And he's, at this point, been taking advantage of it. Nelson on the give and go. Nelson's got six. It's 11 to 10, UT Chattanooga. There's going to be some tired people out here come second half. It's going to be a bench game. Ever who has the best bench probably will win this game. Jason Niblett. Easy layup. 12-11, we change again. Nelson's got seven of UTC's 11 points. Nelson's in, they try to isolate, get him the ball down low. When Nelson's out, UTC's offense is more of a passing game. They do a, excuse me, Rand, they do a good job of isolating the ball into Nelson. You'll see the coach is really working on the sideline. But when Nelson's in the game, they try to isolate. A little two-man game on one half of the court, and the guard and the inside play of Nelson is very difficult to stop. You see Larry Stewart sitting down. Great role player for UT Chattanooga. Checking in Kelly Sutton. Ed Sneed at 6'8 is in there also. And Jerry Pelfrey checks in for the Buccaneers. 
Lavert Greets, leading three-point shooter, puts up a 10-footer. Look at Nelson, just oh. muscle it up, no good. Sneed, blocked by Dennis, but foul by Greg Dennis. It'll be his first. I believe they might have called a go-10 again right there. Uh, Randy, I believe... Well, they're walking away. Yes, it is a foul. Everybody's walking away like they thought it was a goaltend. You're going to see right there, good board work by UT Chattanooga. Nelson almost made a miracle shot, but they keep it alive right there, doing good job at three shots at the bucket for the uh, moccasins. Hawks are missing a lot of shots down low early in this ball game. To get a good look at Max McCarthy. Max done such a super job here at Chattanooga. I believe he's only six wins away from being the winningest Division I coach here in UTC basketball history. Hawks have had three Division I coaches. Ron Shoemate for only one year. Murray Arnold was here six seasons. And Mac McCarthy in his seventh year at UT Chattanooga. Ed Sneed misses the first. He'll get another. Ed's very consistent shooting the ball. He only shoots 43% from the field and 46% from the free throw line, but he got that one to drain. And it hit every possible part of the medal before it went in. <laughs> A traveling violation. Marty Story took steps. And the turnover will give it back to UT Chattanooga now with 12.39 to go first half in a 12-12 ball game. Well, this is like a merry-go-round, a circus, a zoo, whatever you want to call it. There are players running in and out, people that checking in at the turnstiles, people just going in and out of the game. I said this would really be the situation, especially in the first half. Eric Palmer's in there now for East Tennessee State, guarding Tim Brooks as Calford gets arrested. English picked up two fouls in the first minute of the ball game. Four turnovers already. And now three for UT Chattanooga. Frizzell Silvers and Talford team to make that one. Dennis, nice pass. Great speed to Silvers who blew the layup. I don't believe he expected that pass. Great pass, poor shot. That was a good pass by Dennis. Look at this one. Oh, that's going to be a basket interference too. They're going to count that. Oh no, the official said it was still going up. But Mac McCarthy does not agree with that. I believe Mac might agree with me. <laughs> it's very close. Let's see right there. Brooks on a little dipsy do. Look at this. I believe that might be a goal 10. I think the foul was before this. Right there. Before Let's see the right shot. here. Before the oh, shot. Oh, yes, you're right. It was before, but that was definitely. He's too close to the goal right there for it not to be a goal 10. But uh, they called it, as you stated, Randy, good observation. They called it before the shot, and that's the reason why there's no bucket. The foul was on Eric Palmer. And stripped of the ball is Threets. Palmer comes out of there with it. Nice this pass. is the Silvers oh. offensive foul. Eric Palmer gets the charge. Little, and that's his second foul. And the little man took it one step too far. He needs to stop at the free throw line and dish. You see right there, he's too far into the paint. He needs to give it up right at the free throw line, and he's going to be able to get that layup, but instead he gets a charge. The action is fast and furious, but then we thought it would be. Under 12 minutes to go first half, we're tied at 12. We are under the 12-minute mark now in a 12-12 basketball game. UTC and East Tennessee State. The Bucks trying to even things up in the conference and tie UTC. As we said in the standings in the opening of the program tonight, you got Appalachian State who won today yeah. and firm at each at six and three. Hey, last year as you look at the general right here, Alan LaForce, last year, Mac McCarthy, two of his greatest moments last year, Randy and Bob, East Tennessee State. He beat the Buccaneers here last year in this roundhouse. And the second thing that was a great moment for him involving East Tennessee State is when Mr. Jennings graduated. <laughs> well, I said a few moments ago that East Tennessee won three times last year. I was wrong. They won two out of three in Johnson City and in Asheville. But you're right, the Mox did win here in Chattanooga. East Tennessee State now has 17 fouls. And with, uh, you know, that's a lot of time, almost 12 minutes left in this half. For East Tennessee State, they, with the seven fouls, they're going to give Chattanooga one and ones the rest of the way and could get into a two-shot situation very quickly. On the other hand, UTC has only fouled one time. No place like home, right? <laughs> now, I didn't say that. <laughs> I know what the people in Johnson City are probably saying right now. <laughs> It evens up, though, because you play half of them at home and half on the road. East Tennessee State with the ball. UTC has taken the lead back at 13 to 12. 
a little flex offense now. East Tennessee State running what is used to be a very popular offense. A lot of people ran just to give a little motion. Greg Dennis, nice speed, overplayed a bit by Keith Nelson, and Dennis got the bucket. The funny thing about that flex offense, East, uh, East Tennessee State was running, Chattanooga's run that offense. People know the offense, but it's very difficult to stop. We got a technical foul right here. I don't know who it's on, but somebody got a tee. It's on Eric Palmer, the technical, and Tim Brooks, who is second only to, U uh, to East Tennessee State's Calvin Talford in free throw percentage, will be at the line with two shots. Well, you see Grabby Young, uh, the assistant coach, one of the assistants with Alan Force, now Mac McCarthy, discussing the situation. Not really sure what happened. That ties the game at 14. Brooks gets another. And he got it. And the Mocs play the ball in. Eric Palmer will come out of the ball game, and Jason Niblett will check back in. Reese Dudley also sits down. He was in for East Tennessee State, and Talford is back in the ball game. This could be a four-point trip down the floor for Chattanooga. Sutton misses. The long rebound goes to Calvin Talford. Good pass. Here's Dennis, great feed, and Dennis got the layup. And Mac McCarthy wanted a walk, and East Tennessee State wanted a foul. We got three officials and two coaches on the side trying to help them. The technical on Eric Palmer a few moments ago, I don't know if you heard the explanation by Neil Magnuson from UTC, but he was talking a little bit too much to him. Nelson just muscled it up and in, and for the eighth time of this ball game, we've had a lead change. Box go back up by one. Dennis again, yes. Greg Dennis is having a good first half. Boy, Greg Dennis has been a menace. We talked about it at the opening of the game. And, and Randy, this is the kind of play that we expected all season out of Greg Dennis. He had a hard time coming back. And, and really, the last two weeks, he's just played up to his expectations. Eight points for Dennis. Three for three. Swish! One more three. Boy, you start letting him get unleashed. And he can shoot them with anybody. Great stand-up shooter at the Division I level, Levert Threats of UT Chattanooga. Two-point mock lead, their biggest down low, stolen away. Nelson, great save to Tim Brooks. Good defense and a great save. All in one play by Nelson. Brooks banged out of there. Raymond Woods with a rebound. Shot won't go. Dennis. Out of bounds, it'll go to East Tennessee State. Man. Action is fast and furious, and the crowd is in the game. East Tennessee State needs to have a little run right here to take this crowd out because right now the tempo is being dictated by the people in the stands. I got a chance to meet Damon Woods and Ed Sneed of UTC before the ball game. Nice young men. They'll both be back next year. Chattanooga's going to have a lot of talent back next year. I know they're losing some good players, but they got some people sitting out red shirty. They'll be good again next season. Pelfrey ties the ball game. Three ties, nine lead changes in the first ten minutes of the ball game. Tell me I don't like Jerry Pelfrey. Love the way the man plays from up Paintsville, Kentucky. Brother John plays for the Wildcats of Kentucky. Down low, Nelson stripped of that ball by Pelfrey. Story comes oh. out of there. And then he traveled with it. Another turnover. Seven now for East Tennessee State. There's Ron Wilson checking back in for the Moccasins. 9.09 to go. I believe his story stays on the floor right there. He doesn't get the charge. Uh, he doesn't get the uh, travel call. Nelson's got to be tired. He's really been doing great work on both ends. That's what this game is about. The team, as you said, that wins this one stands a real good chance of being the top seed for the tournament. But a lot of games left to go. Fox still have to go to Furman. Shot by Sutton, misses. The rebound goes to Jason Niblett. Talford's been quiet recently. Talford rejected by Damon Woods. Open court, Tim Brooks against Niblett. Wilson against Spears. It won't go. Wilson. That's the kind of 
player right there that you gotta have to be successful. A kind of kid that really just comes in, they call him meat, and you saw just reason why. He just plays hard, he picks up a lot of garbage, he creates a lot of things. Hardy Story underneath. Hardy Story in that great cut in that flex offense, and it was a good pick that freed him along the baseline and a good pass to spot him all alone in the paint. Tie game again. Oh. Layup won't go. The follow through by Freaks. Chattanooga right now very assertive on the offensive glass. Spears at 6'10", way out away from the basket. There's Great another. feed oh, again. Yeah. Pelfrey to story. Well, that's just good backdoor cuts. People losing their players in the backdoor screens. And, and Jerry Pelfrey's doing a super job of spotting players along the block wide open. 7.25 to go. A whistle and a foul will be against Levert Threats. No, or is it Story? I saw the four, but it will be 34. Marty Story, who gets the holding foul. And Threats will go to the free throw line. Marty Story. Very physical inside. Played football one year at Clemson University. Got a timeout. 7.24 to go in the first half. Tie ball game. And we'll be back to... Well, the flex offense has been very good the last two trips down for East Tennessee State. Marty Story wide open underneath, and LaVert Freitz is picked off, and Chattanooga is going to have to do a better job adjusting to that flex offense. While we have a moment, we will remind you that the announcers for tonight's game have been contracted for and approved by East Tennessee State University and the Southern Conference. Any use, rebroadcast, or other transmission of the game without the written consent of ETSU, the Southern Conference, and host creative communications is prohibited. 24-24, 7-21 to golf. Look at the field goal percentages. Mox hitting only 32%, yet they're even. The reason for that disparage, disparage in the fact that they're even is because Chattanooga is really doing a great job shooting from the free throw line. Calpert for three, missed it. Keith Nelson gets the rebound. East Tennessee's not hitting. They're in trouble if they can't go to the glass. We've seen that happen time and time again this year. Well, the two players are really key. Talford's not really having a good first half, and uh, you got Rodney English sitting on the bench after getting those two quick fouls. Ed Sneed gave up the shot. You gotta shoot that ball, Ed. You gotta shoot that. You're gonna create a lot of pressure on your teammates. They're gonna give him the shot. Dennis playing behind Nelson. He's wanting him to take it to the bucket. East Tennessee converges on him. Scramble for that ball. Big ball. Oh, boy. Jump ball will go to UT Chattanooga. First down, Chattanooga. <laughs> There's the possession arrow. Oh, you love to see this in college basketball. Ball's on the floor. The first thing you try to do in the first few weeks of practice, as Mac McCarthy, no doubt, has told his players, anytime the ball's on the floor, we got to get on the floor and get after it. Allen the Force, on the other hand, has done such a super job installing very good defensive system here at East Tennessee State. Always been a good offensive club, but now they play strong defense, too. Good pass from Sutton to Brooks. Off-balance shot kept alive. Ed Sneed saves it deep for UTC. They'll reset it. Here's Brooks against Pelfrey. Sneed walked. Little indecision right there. Sneed and Woods need to make up their mind. They need to take that shot just as soon as they see the clearing. We talk about the crowd, which I would say at least 10, 5, maybe 11,000 in here. Largest crowd of the year, certainly, for UT Chattanooga. But East Tennessee State not afraid of playing in front of big crowds in hostile environments. They've already won at Tennessee, at North Carolina State this year, among others. Xavier's another one. Marty Story with the ball. Here's Pelfrey at the top of the key. They lob it to Dennis along the baseline. Nice, nice speed to Story, who got the layup. And the Bucks go back out by two. It's very interesting to see Nelson on the one end, Chattanooga. They're just playing him one-on-one. -on, -one. on the other end, they're playing Dennis 
two man and helping out a lot and that was a great pass that time by Dennis. Nelson stripped to the ball. Dennis playing behind him and they're helping out with Nelson inside. That time they doubled down but the first part of the game they just let him have his day. Look at here. Boom. Oh my. Greg Dennis with a nice offensive move. Dennis on the night has 10 points. Greg Dennis. He's the menace. We said, we said, you know, early in the season, really wasn't playing well, but you got to remember, 6'11 senior set out all last year with the injury. Redden from the head of the key. Bounced in and out a couple of times, and Calvin Telford was sky high for the rebound. The foul will oh. be against UTC after the shot. I'm just going to say, you're not going to see very many players in the U.S. of A., at the 6-4, they can get up with Calvin Talford. Boy, does he elevate. You're going to see right here, the offensive glass. Watch him jump. Boom, he gets up there, and let's see. Yes, claims it, and gets fouled in the process. Kelly Sutton gets the foul for UTC. 4.45 to go first half. Buccaneers with their biggest lead at four. They've got the ball. Alfred hasn't scored much, Randy, but his size and quickness out there is a big concern for ever who's guarding him. Stolen away. Good job by Keith Nelson. They tried to go to Dennis. Sutton's got it for Chattanooga. Kicked out of bounds by Marty Story. Fox will play the ball back in now with 4.20 to go. And again, the substitutions. Reese Dudley back in. Talford will get a rest. We'll probably see Talford again before the end of the half. And we have not seen Rodney English since about the 18-minute mark when he got his second foul. Seeing a lot of players come into the game tonight that really I haven't seen play a lot all year. And this big game is really, it's really got to be something special for both clubs. A whistle, a foul against Reese Dudley, who just came in the ball game for East Tennessee State. Randy, we might not see Greg Dennis again in the half because if I'm not mistaken, Greg Dennis also has two, and they might save him the rest of the half. Especially, oh, we got a hurt player right here. That's Kelly Sutton, who uh, has an injury, and probably a cut above his eye. They have to have a stitch, or at least they're going to tend to Kelly Sutton. A little butterfly on that. He probably will be taking dressing room, and uh, he might have to have a stitch, but they can do that. You're going to see uh, right here the action. Pass from Brooks inside. Let's see right here. By the yeah, elbow. Right there. Yeah. Right there. Elbow right to the uh, to the right eye. So Kelly Sutton will go to the locker room early. 4:18 to go. 28-24. Larry Stewart will be at the line for UTC shooting the free throw. Kind of reminds you of the incident when uh, Montrose playing against Duke the other night was taken to the dressing room and had to have stitches in his face and also before the end of the game was cut in the back of the head. And he had blood all over him and had blood on his uniform at the end of the game. Stewart makes the first. It's a three-point East Tennessee State lead. The Bucks have lost two in Southern Conference play. Ironically, as Stewart makes the second, both losses have come at home to UTC and on Monday night a double overtime loss to Furman. The Bucks have already played at Furman and won by five. Traveling violation. Dudley walked as the Mox got all over him on the right corner. Reese Dudley trying to take it too far but give Chattanooga credit. They did a good job of sealing off on the baseline and double teaming the basketball. What a super job and again Chattanooga and East Tennessee State two of the best defensive clubs in the league. 28-26, UT Chattanooga looking to tie. Turnovers, 10 already for East Tennessee, eight for the Mox. Under the four-minute mark to go first half. Levert treats, they go to Ron Wilson. Wilson wants the ball, he wants to score. Here's Brooks driving all the way in, dropping it to Redden, no good. Redden has struggled shooting tonight as Topford gets the rebound. He's open. Oh, nice oh. pass. Marty Story. And oh. the foul on Ron Wilson, and Story gets a shot at a three-point play. Oh. Everybody went up huh. expecting Talford to shoot the three, and he hit a streaking Marty Story. We're going to see look. a great pass right here. I thought he was going to shoot it, too. He goes up. He's high in the bucket, and boom, out of the right wing comes Rodney 
he, you know, he does such a good job catching this ball and then putting it up to dunk it, and he's going to get a chance for a three-point play. We talk about athletes. We talked about Calvin Talford. <laughs> Marty Story Marty. is a great athlete. We've said so many times, talked about his football career at Clemson where he was a wide receiver. What a great athlete. He is a very physical player and got a lot of heart, too, Ray. He told me before the game, make sure you tell my little girl a belated happy Valentine. Four-point Buccaneer lead. His story missed the free throw. Foul on Reese Dudley. As Brooks goes streaking into the bucket. That'll be team foul number nine on East Tennessee State. And it'll be a one-and-one one for Tim Brooks. Randy, the next foul with 322 left in the first half. The next foul by East Tennessee State, Chattanooga will be shooting two shots. That will be the tenth foul on the next foul. Brooks is so automatic. Mac McCarthy's pulled these other four players off. He's talking to them. If you, as you get a good look there, Brooks hitting about 90 percent. Great free throw shooter, and everybody for East Tennessee is under the bucket. You know, for somebody that didn't pl practice all week, he really is showing a lot of stamina by playing as many minutes and playing as well as he is. We're going to take a time. 3.22 to go. First half. We got a good one in Chattanooga. It's a two-point East Tennessee State lead. And we'll be right back. There's a good look at this crowd on a Saturday night in Chattanooga, <laughs> Tennessee. They've watched these moccasins put together two really impressive winning streaks. There's a few Buck fans. I'd say about three or 400 of those here. The Mox have put together winning streaks of eight in a row. And now six in a row. They've won 14 of their last 15 ball games. They're having a great, great year. The thing that they've been doing is very impressive to me, Randy. They've been winning on the road, especially in the conference, places that have been uh, uh, kind of tough on recently. In the Dennis. paint, Dennis and Story, 18 points. Nelson with nine. Dennis kept it alive. Dennis again goes up. He's fouled. Dennis has 10. Talford started all that by missing a three. Dennis went to work on the boards. He's working on the boards right now because of the absence of Keith Nelson, who's sitting on the bench because he has two fouls, and Mac McCarthy's protecting his star center from getting that third one before the half. Buccaneers have won two consecutive. Southern Conference regular season championships. They shared with UTC and Firma a year ago. They've won three straight tournament championships. As we go to Asheville, you got to look at the Bucks because these guys have been there before. But so is Mac McCarthy. His first year at UTC, he was in the championship game and lost to Davidson. That tournament's going to be something special. I would hate to have to play Marshall, who's been playing very well. Remember who is the top seed? Maybe one of these two teams is going to have to play the Thundering Herd in the first round. Under three minutes to go. Bucks by four. Threets is fouled by Trezell Silvers. And LeVert Threets will get two shots. You're going to see a classic little head and fake, little pump. They teach all this stuff right at clinics. A good jump stop. We're going to watch a jump stop right here. Threes is going to take the ball on a dribble. Right there, jump stop, head and shoulders, twice pump, and jump right up. Man commits himself. He's going to get a chance for two. Threes at the free throw line for UTC, hitting just under 64%. As a team, the box hit just under 70%. Not too bad. Both these teams score a lot of points. UTC averaging 82 points a game. The Bucks averaging 86. A little jump stop, head and shoulders fate. LeBert Threats with eight points now. Those are the kind of things that basketball players pick up in the summertime. That's the reason why it's so important for the moms and dads out there to make sure their kids get to basketball camps in the summer to learn those little uh, fundamental techniques. Two-point ball game again. Bucks lead it. Greg Dennis fouled by Ron Wilson. And Dennis will go back to the line with two more. He has 12 already. The foul on UTC's Ron Wilson. I think that might be Wilson's third. You're going to see right now, pretty good. Dennis can put the ball on the floor, showing a little of that right there. I don't know where the foul was, but he's going to get a chance for two shots. But if Wilson has three now, I'm not really... Yes, he has three fouls, Randy, and that really is a key because you got to remember, he's the real true post player inside, and Nelson, the other player, has two, so they're going to make a decision. Are they going to protect Nelson? I'm sure he's not going to get back in the game. 
but they're going to let Wilson play the rest of the half. He could possibly pick up his fourth. Dennis with 13 points. Dennis got his 14th point on a nice shooter's roll. Checking back in, Trezell Silvers, and they're going to give Greg Dennis a rest. The Bucks lead by four, 34-30, late in the first half. And the thing is, they've done it with Rodney English on the bench with two fouls. This is big for them. But you're seeing good coaching strategy right now. They can afford to take Dennis out, put Silvers in to guard Wilson. I guarantee you, Dennis will be back in when they get a chance to substitution, especially on the offensive end. Bart Redden drives the baseline, and it's stolen by Talford. Great job of cutting off the passing lane, Calvin Talbot. Jerry Pelfrey, East Tennessee running that motion offense. Pelfrey with a fake. Good ball movement. Niblett. Oh, nice shot by Jason Niblett. Boy, and he's very fortunate that he didn't get a charge call after he released the ball. He uh, pushed Threets down, who was set for the charge. 145 to go. East Tennessee with its biggest lead. It's six. They go to Wilson. Over Silvers. Wilson got a big bucket for the box. Well, with Dennis out right now, Wilson knows that when he touches a ball down on the paint, he can take it to the glass. East Tennessee with the ball on a four-point lead. Talford for three. Missed it. Silver's got the rebound, missed the follow. Wilson with a rebound for UTC. Here come the box, down four. Nice Great pass. Speed. Foul on Story. Wilson will draw two shots. Great no-look pass by Tim Brooks, a little point guard for the Moccasins. Let's check right here. Great no-look, Randy. And he feeds Meet Wilson, who you got to remember is playing with three fouls, and he's playing on both ends very well. Mac McCarthy's got to like his play. Greg Dennis back in the ball game. You were right; he wasn't going to be out too long. Four-point lead, and Wilson at the line, a 73% foul shooter. However, he missed this one. He has a chance for one more and make it a three-point game. Well, Greg Dennis, when he goes out, Wilson knows he can score against Silvers, but on the other hand, and when uh, when the big man, Dennis, comes in the game, he knows he can score on the UTC defensive end. Wilson missed both free throws, and Dennis gets the rebound. Those are crucial misses. They need to go to Dennis, too, to try to make Wilson pick up his fourth foul. Talford's posting up against Stewart. Talford! Oh, he made it! Mac McCarthy wants a charge, but the foul will be against UTC's Ron Wilson. And that's and critical. Talford got the bucket. And that's critical. That is very critical because now Wilson, who was playing so well, trying to protect Nelson from picking up his third, now has to go to the bench with four. Let's four see right Wilson. now. This is very close. Critical call. I tell you what. <laughs> that's that. Big call that everybody talks about, the old block charge situation. I think, what, as you're going to see, Matt McCarthy's looking at one official. One official was going to call the charge. The other official, who was on top of the play, called the block. And Mac is still getting the last word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Salford misses a free throw, and Preach gets the rebound. After all that, the Bucks maintain a six-point lead. We're under a minute to go in the first half. Calford still guarding Brooks on the perimeter. Nice move by Brooks. He's fouled by Talford, and Brooks will be back at the line with two shots. That one almost went in for him. Certainly did. You saw quickness going against quickness right there. Brooks taking on Talford. Nobody from, from uh, East Tennessee State really stepped in to help stop the penetration of Brooks. A good look at Tim Brooks played at Sullivan Business College along with Keith Nelson. Brooks followed him here. Brooks will be back next year. There's Ron Wilson who got his fourth foul for the Moccasins a moment ago. That's a rare miss by Tim Brooks. I credit that miss to fatigue. You got to remember six points all from the line tonight, but here's a player who missed several days of practice because of a throat infection. 
He's also had Calvin Talford guarding him most of the night, that's too. That's exactly right. And that's the reason why he has not scored a field goal. Brooks went for the steal, and big mistake by Niblett. Niblett picks the ball up, steps on the line. The ball really hasn't been out yet. It has not been established as out of bounds. And he touches the ball while standing out of bounds, and the ball's going to go to the moccasins. Six-point lead for the Bucks. 32 seconds to go. No shot clock. And East Tennessee with a rash of substitutes in here. Dennis is out. So is Calford. In the ball game, Damian Hodge. He's guarding Brooks. And Nelson is in the game just for offensive reasons. With two fouls, remember. Better be careful not to pick up an offensive foul. And Pelfrey's guarding him. Redden spinning away, drops it back to Threets with nine seconds. Threets, jumper, good off the glass. He went up over Silvers, three seconds. Damian Hodge, his 40-footer, off the side of the rim. Oh, we've got a good one. East Tennessee State leading by three, 38-35. We are at halftime. We'll be back to the UTC Arena in Chattanooga, Tennessee, in just a moment. <laughs> I'll just let East Tennessee play it in. Let's start the second half, which we do. Niblett against Brooks. Boy, Niblett just roared past him. He doesn't want to shoot down there. There's a foul first, however, and it's on Keith Nelson of UTC. That's his third. And that's critical right there because now he picks up that third foul with just six seconds go. Questionable call right here. See, Brooks, uh, I, I really don't know where, there's a, where there was a foul, but Brooks uh, reached in on Niblett and kind of bothered the ball. Jason had a hard time picking it up, but when he did, he got fouled by Nelson. Nelson's third foul, that, as Ron mentioned, could be really critical down the stretch. Wilson's got four already. He's on the bench. English, who went out early with two, is back in there now. Kelly Sutton in the game, Randy. He's got several stitches in that over that right eye for UT Chattanooga. They'll bring it back out. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Buccaneers lead by three. Biggest lead for them has been six. Great nice pass. Lead to Story, who muscled it up and over Keith Nelson, who didn't want to foul him. The old revived flex offense. They just were very patient. Took a lot of time off the clock. A lot of passing in there. Made Chattanooga work on the defensive end. Ten points for Marty Story, who's having his best game of the year for East Tennessee State. Brooks with the basketball. Down on the block. They go to Nelson. And had it stolen. They collapsed on him. Niblett and Dennis collapsed on Nelson. Great running job nice by pass. Red. Talford, English, missed it. Over the back, a foul against East Tennessee's Greg Dennis, and that will be his second foul. Great job a moment ago by Calvin Talford, who kept the ball and then fed the ball inside. And Bart Redden doing a very good job uh, trying to check Rodney English. He did a good job in the passing lane of slapping the ball away, and that's when uh, uh, Redden was able to uh, get his hand on it, and uh, they almost got a conversion there. Redden guarded English the first time the two teams met. That was up in Johnson City a couple of weeks ago. Rodney English had 27, but boy, he had to work for him, as Mac McCarthy told us earlier. Box with the ball. Levert Threets off the glass and in. Threets has got 13, and it's a three-point ball game. Good job by Threets, guarded by English, kissing it off the glass, off the dribble. Calvin Talford with the ball. Marty Story working the motion offense for East Tennessee State. Nice oh. feed, English. Falling away from the bucket. Dennis kept it alive, and Talford buries a two. Great job by Talford just to keep the ball alive, but East Tennessee State's doing an excellent job getting that ball down on the block inside the paint in this flex offense. On the baseline, they go to Nelson, and Talford stole the ball. They can't get the ball to Nelson. Well, second half now, they're collapsing and double-teaming Nelson when he has the ball on the block. Oh, they left Dennis open, which you cannot do, and he just rips a three. And East Tennessee State is out by eight. And they need a timeout, or they need to answer right here. 
to get the crowd in the game. And that's one thing that East Tennessee State has effectively done, especially in the second half. This crowd has never really been a factor. He's 11,000 people here in Chattanooga. Here's Keith Nelson. Oh! Dump the ball, then there's the foul. And then there's a fight ensuing. Boy, that was ugly. Just need to separate them right now. There's no problem. Just separate everybody. Nelson, you could tell, Randy, when he left from the free throw line, you could tell exactly what he had in mind. Unfortunately for the Buccaneers, Nel uh, the big man, uh, Dennis, was underneath lying on the, on the, on the floor. Going to see right there. Oh, kind of hangs right there. And, and Dennis on the floor, he grabs Nelson's leg. It, very fortunate they didn't really get into the altercation right there. Hangs right there and kind of balances on uh, on Dennis. Oh, but look at that. Nelson. You know what that was very similar to, Randy? <laughs> that was similar to what happened to Robert Ory the other night when Alabama went to Kentucky. Get caught underneath and uh, one guy's hanging onto your leg. The other guy tries to free himself. Officials in that situation, good no call. No technicals and no problem. 45-38. Officials got in there quickly to prevent something from happening there. And they did a good job of that. Nelson will make two free throws. It's a five-point ball game now. And the, they have a timeout. 17 minutes exactly to be played in the ball game. 45-40. We'll be back in just a moment. Six-point ball game. East Tennessee State with a lead following the two Keith Nelson free throws. He's got 11. So you look at the UT Chattanooga bench and now the East Tennessee State bench. It's a long timeout. Got to give a lot of credit right there. The reason for the long timeout, they were attending to an official who I believe, Randy, might have gotten an uh, elbow in that little scuffle. And there's the official we're looking at right there. And uh, he's not feeling very well. He got an elbow in that little altercation. And uh, you got to give a lot of credit to those men in the stripes because they really got into that ugly situation very quickly and did a great job of uh, untangling the mess. Trezell Silvers comes into the ball game now for Greg Dennis, who went out following the brief little altercation. Rodney English is in there, and here's a steal. Kelly Sutton took it away as English made a bad pass to Telford. Sutton. Missed the three, goes over the backboard. Sutton is one of the top three-point uh, three shooters in the conference in terms of shots made. I tell you, that's one way. Kelly Sutton just did a great job. You want to stop that flex offense? You've got to do a good job of keeping those guard-to-guard -guard passes. And that was a good job. He steps in again. Oh, that's undercut. This time, Sutton makes the bucket. It's a four-point game. The crowd is back in it. And it is loud as you look at the steal. Loose ball. Box get it. They come out of there. Tim Brooks. Nelson. East Tennessee State needs a timeout. They need to get this crowd out of it some way. Two-point ball game. Six straight points. There's a traveling violation against Jason Nibbler. And the wheels have come off the Buccaneer ship right here. It's all because of the play of Kelly Sutton. Two times he steps into the passing lane, and on the other end, he's, he deflects the ball in on the block. Three great defensive plays in less than a minute by Kelly Sutton. Bart Redden with a basketball. East Tennessee State has led since about the four-minute mark. There's the foul. It'll be on Kelly Sutton after the shot. And the Bucks get the ball back after UTC had a chance to tie. Kelly Sutton limping, walking very gingerly on that left foot. <laughs> He's going to sleep well tonight. Stitches over his right eye. Ankle hurt just a little bit right there, but doing a great job creating three turnovers here in the early minutes of the second half. Talford for three. Missed it. Long rebound goes to Nibbler. He'll fire up a three. Missed it. Story got the rebound. English. 
Wilson comes out of there with the ball. Here are the Mocs working again to tie. Sutton for three. English got the rebound. Calford again missed it. Story with a long rebound. Boy, this pace is tense. And frantic. And the crowd is really pumped right now. Everyone standing. Rodney English and Trezell Silvers. Silvers count it and the foul. Boy, East Tennessee State did a real job going to the glass that time. Well, that's not only that trip, but Randy, the previous trip, they got three cracks at it. You're going to see right now, Rodney English takes a good look at it, kisses it off the glass, no good. That's one rebound and a follow by Silvers. Silvers goes up a second time, gets a rebound, but he's not through. Gets maybe a little foul right there, and he's going to get a chance for a three-point play. Foul was on Tim Brooks reaching in. That's only his first foul. 14.39 to go. And Trezell Silvers with a chance to give the Buccaneers a five-point lead. He missed it. Nelson with the board. Chattanooga currently on a 6-0 run, and most of that has been because of their defense. I'll tell you, the intensity of their defense has really gotten the crowd into the game. Well, now it's 6-2 after the bucket by Silvers. Greets off balance is fouled by Niblett, and LaVert Greets will get two free throws. Got to also remember the score was 45 to 37 when Nelson and Dennis got tangled up. And since that little tangle up, we have really had an intense game. LaVert Reeds at the line with two shots, and Greg Dennis checks back in for East Tennessee State. There's Mac McCarthy. His seventh season, head coach at the UTC. Reeves hit it all and got the free throw. He'll get one more. It's a three-point game. 14 points, five rebounds. Nice game, LaVert Reeves. LaVert Reeves has always been a good defensive player. He's also rebounded well, but this season he has really picked it up a notch on the offensive end, especially from the three-point circle. Now the officials talking to somebody in the crowd. Getting a security man to uh, move somebody. <laughs> oh, boy, we got a little bit of everything here tonight. Kelly Sutton sitting on the pine right now, getting that rest. Patch over his right eye. What a great job he did in the opening minutes of the second half. Nelson almost got the steal from Dennis. Boy, Dennis. Behind the back, yeah. Team Tormolin <laughs> is here scouting for an NBA team. How do you like that at 6'11"? Nice Here's pass. English with a jam. Oh, they're really hurting Chattanooga. They're getting the basketball right where you want to get it, and that's inside the paint around the block area. That flex offense has really created problems for the Moccasin. Five points for Rodney English. Bart Redden misses the three. Calvin Talford in the Raptors for the rebound. Quickly, the Buccaneers have it. English missed it. Dennis is there, and he's stripped of the ball by Tim Brooks. Fast and furious crowd wants to pick it up a notch even more. They're really crazy here tonight in Chattanooga. Tim Brooks with the ball. East Tennessee State by four. We're right over 13 minutes left. A lot of time in the paint to Nelson. He got it. Randy, I really believe you can go to both big men because you got to remember on the offensive end, they're guarded by someone who has three. Nelson has three and Dennis also has three. English drops it back to Dennis. Missed it. Got his own follow at 6'11", <laughs> Greg Dennis. They're both playing with three fouls, so they're just saying, hey, you're not going to guard me. I can't guard you. So let's just both see how many points we can score on each end. Greg Dennis has got six feet. And reaching around is Marty Story. He gets the personal foul. 
for East Tennessee State. Kelly Sutton will check back into the mock lineup, and here comes Jerry Pelfrey for the Bucks. Kelly Sutton coming back in for Chattanooga after doing such a good job on the defensive end, giving uh, Brooks just a little breather. Very interesting to notice that when Marty Story, who is right now guarding Nelson, in the first half, Dennis was allowing Nelson to get the basketball down on the block. He was in position for the block, but now they're giving him the, the ball. And uh, actually, Randy, what they're trying to do is to uh, saddle up on him, what we call, and deny him the pass. Jerry Pelfrey gets the foul, and Keith Nelson will draw two shots for UTC. It's a four-point book lead, 51-47. With Pelfrey coming in on that exchange, we saw Pelfrey pick up Nelson. And so Nelson has had three players, three Buccaneers, three different Buccaneers to guard him in the early minutes of the second half. Nelson misses this one, and he'll get another one. But he wants the ball wiped off, so it's wet. That's, that's being a shooter. Wipe the ball off. Eric Palmer into the ball game for that man. Jason Niblett will get a breather. He'll be back, though, with 12.34. A lot of time left in this one. Got it. Nelson makes one out of two, and it's a three-point ball game. And Nelson will sit down. Sweat made the difference. Nelson says, hey, wipe the ball off. I can't shoot that slippery ball. He gets the sweat off. He nails it. Three-point game. Palmer finds story. Talford all the way. Drops it back to Story, who's hammered and fouled. I believe it will be either Sutton or Threats. It will be Threats. Marty Story's probably having the best game that I've seen him play this year. We've covered him second several times. But look again. Talford draws a lot of people. What a great pass over his right shoulder to Marty Story. And Marty Story in the first half, uh, Randy, he had, uh, let's see, Marty Story in the first half, what did, what did we come up with? At eight points. Eight points, and that was on an average of three, and in the second half picking up that same pace. Story is the guy that Mac McCarthy would like to have at the free throw line. He's not a good foul shooter, about 53%. The 10 points and two rebounds tonight for East Tennessee State. Got the second one to go down, and it's a four-point buck lead again. Two teams swap free throws on the last two possessions. Oh, what a pick out front by Sutton. Nice speed. Damon Woods rejected by Marty Story out of bounds. And the Mox retain possession. Marty Story. He's the story for the Buccaneers. We're going to see a good pass in there to Woods. And he's guarded by Pelfrey. But Story comes from the backside to slap it away. Kelly Sutton is guarded by Story. On the block, Woods travel. Greg Dennis hung with him despite the head thing. We're going to take a timeout. Under 12 minutes to go. It's a four-point Buccaneer lead. We'll be right back to the UTC Arena. You stay with us. Well, Greg Dennis has been a very menacing player tonight. Moccasin's having a difficult time. You're going to see good penetration by the 6'11 post player. He shot is a little short, but a great follow-through, fine touch on the bucket. 11.46 to go. Calvin Talford with the ball. Palmer's still in there. Palmer takes it all away, and he's fouled. The foul will be against Kelly Sutton. Palmer just taking the ball right to the glass. Does a good job right there. Boy, that was real close. Officials having a tough time tonight on the block charge, but you know, when you have those situations, you got to watch the defender. You got to see what he does, and those officials are right on top of play, and uh, they're they're really making the calls tonight. There have been a lot of those situations here in this game. Eric Palmer, only a 54% foul shooter on the year, hits the first. Palmer will get another. 
7.39 to go. Five-point lead. Randy, nobody's back on Brooks. Everybody's on the lane. You can't move. If they miss this, they can throw it the other end. Just what's going to happen. Oh, they didn't know he was there. Tim Brooks was all alone because five Buccaneers were on the lane, and they couldn't move because the official had handed the shooter the ball. They got out there quickly, I'll guarantee you. Brooks with the ball, the five-point lead. Whistle and a foul will be against East Tennessee State's Marty Story. I'm telling you, Threets didn't have a clue that Brooks was back all alone. When he gets that rebound, it comes off on the right side. All he has to do is hook past the ball on the other end, and he's got a layup. Marty Story gets his third fouls. Third foul. The fouls begin to stack up now on both teams as Brook looks to inbound for UTC. Gets it into Kelly Sutton, who goes baseline. Nelson missed the shot. Saved by Nelson to Sutton. Great play by Keith Nelson. And I like the way Kelly Sutton has played on both ends in this second half. Oh, Greg Dennis. Most times when you see a 6'11 player, yeah. you say, go ahead and take that shot. <laughs> Not with this guy. Brooks had it stolen. Oh, look at here. Oh, he traveled. Oh, if he doesn't travel right there, you're going to see a big slam for the NBA people. <laughs> He's playing. We said he had to have a menacing game. Greg Dennis has been a very menacing player against the Moccasins here in Chattanooga. Has he has 23 points right now and just playing exactly the way he did last year when the Buccaneers came in here and lost. He also had a good game that night. 56-50, your score. Lovert greets with the ball in the corner. Off balance shot, won't go. Talford with a rebound. Reach may have forced that he, shot. He certainly did because he was very well defended by Dennis and uh, he, he really was wanting to shoot that ball. Talford for three. Yes. Talford rips a three. And East Tennessee State has roared out by nine as Dennis and Talford have hit from three point land. Time out. UT Chattanooga. 10 minutes, 13 seconds. A lot of time left, but the Bucks are up by nine. We'll be right back. One of the reasons why East Tennessee State has gotten out to this lead is because of three-point shooting. You're going to see right now, Talford bury one, and in the first half, the Buccaneers only had two three-pointers, and the last two trips down, they've had two trays. Greg Dennis has 23 points as he hit a big three right before Talford buried that one for East Tennessee State. Five of 15 for the Bucks, 33% to Mox have hit only one of seven three-point shots. That goes back to what we said about perimeter pressure tonight. Exactly. That's almost five-second count. Talford stole it away. Watch this out. Be interesting. Oh, East Tennessee State by 11 as Talford has scored five straight for the Bucks. Chattanooga, a lot of standing around right now. Nobody to pass it to. It was almost a five-second count on Brooks. Levert Greeks. Nice drive. Missed it. Talford kept it alive. It's saved by Kelly Sutton. UTC needs a bucket here. 20 to go. Bart Redman. Pelfrey inside on Nelson. On the block to Nelson over Pelfrey. Missed the shot. And there's a foul on LeVert Greets. That'll be his third. That's a little frustration foul right there. There's no way that he's going to be able to keep that alive without crawling on English. You're going to see right now Pelfrey just getting a hand up in the face of Nelson. And over the back right there. There's no way that uh, Threets is going to be able to keep the ball alive without fouling Rodney Ingram. Chattanooga's post players getting in some foul trouble. Nelson and Threets each have three. Wilson on the bench with four. Dennis misses the three. Rebound kept alive. Pelfrey, they call a jump ball. It'll go to UT Chattanooga. And here comes Wilson checking in now for the Mox with four personal fouls. Going to get more of an inside look right now. You're going to have two post players in there with Wilson and Nelson. And also keep in mind, uh, Threets is a very good uh, three-man. 
perimeter player. Story and Niblet are on the bench for East Tennessee State. Kelly Sutton. In the corner, three for three. And he's fouled by Dennis. Oh, it's got through saying that Breach is a good perimeter player. What Mac McCarthy did right there by bringing Wilson into the game, Breach is able to operate on that perimeter. He's very effective. We're going to see a rare attempt at a four-point play. Breach goes up, and Dennis on the blockout gets too close and knocks Breach down. Breach buries the three, and now he's going to get a chance for the four-point play. That's four fouls on Greg Dennis. And I would have to say, as well as he has played, and he has had a super game, he's got to sit down now because of a really a foolish foul because you just don't want to foul a player when you're 6'11", out on the perimeter behind the three-point circle on a jump shot. LaVert Threets has had a good game, 17 points. Has 18 as he got the roll on the free throw, and it's 61 to 53, 54. Seven-point ball game. Four straight points now by the Moccasins, all four by Threets on a four-point play. And the crowd is getting loud. Talford guarded by Sutton, had it stolen. Then there's the foul by Talford. If I'm giving a player of the game award right now based upon this second half, it's got to go to this man especially if you're a moccasin fan that's a that's a fourth turnover that he's created in the second half the attendance is just under 11,000 for this ball game bonus free throw situation kelly sutton to the line if he hits both we have a five point ball game and east tennessee state calls time Eight minutes, 30 seconds to go. We'll be back to UTC's roundhouse in just a moment. Eight minutes, 30 seconds to go. The Tomahawk Chop is in Chattanooga tonight as the Moccasins are rallying. They were down 11 a moment ago. Now they've scored four straight, and at the line will be Kelly Sutton. Kelly Sutton just really has played an outstanding second half. You know, usually when you pressure the perimeter like East Tennessee State does, you're vulnerable to the penetration off the dribble. And I really believe that uh, East Tennessee State has done a very good job containing Brooks tonight, who is as good as any guard in the conference. But here's the man who's really picked it up, especially in the second half, Kelly Sutton, the off guard for Mac McCarthy. Sutton with that patch over his eye makes the first free throw. Two players here tonight from Marshall country, Charleston, West Virginia, Greg Dennis of the Buccaneers from Charleston, and also Kelly Sutton, who uh, lives in London, which is outside of Charleston. Six straight for the Mocs. Five-point game now. East Tennessee leads. 8.26 to go. The crowd got into the ball game a moment ago. The three-point shot took him out of it. Nelson gets the rebound as English misses the three. UTC can cut it to three or two. There's the lob to Nelson. He got it. Three-point game. That's just an outstanding pass right there from Brooks to Nelson. Pelfrey kind of saddling up on him a little bit. And a great pass to the left side of the glass. 7.45. That's the time remaining in this one. Story in trouble. Jump ball goes to East Tennessee State. Oh, Story a, got in trouble. They made yeah. a sandwich out of it. What a great job that time. Defensive effort by Chattanooga cutting off the, of the, the baseline and getting help. Two men corral Story, and uh, you get a uh, alternating possession is the only way that uh, East Tennessee State retains it. Well, they backed off Pelfrey and let him shoot that three. He chose not to shoot it. East Tennessee being deliberate. 7.24. Time remaining. English in the lane. Good. Rodney English. Big bucket. Chattanooga going down on the other end now. They need to play some power basketball with Nelson in the game because with uh, Dennis out, East Tennessee State is very small. 
Five-point lead for the Bucks. Tim Brooks battling that throat infection. Fatigue is in there. He's played well. Hasn't scored a lot, but he's played well. Reach for the ball for UTC. Whistle away from the ball. It's against Kelly Sutton. UTC right there. Now the Bucks come back up the floor with a five-point lead. Now we're going to shoot the free throw. And Calvin Calford, who is second only to Brooks in foul shooting, will be at the line. I'm looking up at this foul situation. With 6.54 left, both teams in a one-and-one, and, one, and uh, East Tennessee State, they're, they're very close to being able to shoot two the rest of the way. Talford makes the first. It's a six-point game. There's Greg Dennis on the bench now with 23 points. Doing a little cheerleading. Last year when he sat out, he did a little bit of radio work, analysis on the Buccaneer Network. He, by the time he gets out of East Tennessee State, he will have experience on his resume for doing a lot of things relating to basketball. Talford makes a pair. The seven-point ball game again. Brooks against Talford. the block to Nelson tapped away out of bounds it goes and the Mox retain possession with 28 on the shot clock great thought right there by Ron Wilson to cut down the gut of the lane Keith Nelson was looking for him because he knew he had two players on him nice Reach. pass whistle and a foul it will be against East Tennessee State's Jason Niblick. You know, in the first half, they were not even running or saddling up on Nelson. With Dennis in there, they were giving him the basketball and just making him work. Now they're saddling it up, and the Moccasins are doing a very good job of throwing that basketball to the side of the glass, which Nelson is on, and he has great hands. You see Jerry Pelfrey explaining his situation on the sideline to John Schulman, assistant coach. Keith Nelson at the line for UT Chattanooga. 6.34 to go. Nelson's got 18. Wilson! Nice job on the offensive glass, but East Tennessee gets it. Three mocks ran together. They would have gotten the ball then. That was a good job by Trezell Silvers also to block that shot that came in, in by the Marcus. Jason Niblett. Rip. Niblett bangs the jumper in, and just like that, East Tennessee's back out by nine. Silvers is now on uh, Nelson. That's a fourth player. Dennis Pelfrey scored Silvers, ball guarded. The all-star post player for Chattanooga. Sutton missed the three. There's the lob to Silvers. Nice pass. Silvers got the layup. And East Tennessee has regained that 11-point lead they had at 61-60 a few moments ago. And UTC wants time. Exactly. Timeout, 5.47 to go. East Tennessee is roared out by 11 once again. And we'll be back to the UTC Arena right after this. We're going to see right here, East Tennessee State just won't die. They won't go away. Chattanooga at home making runs. But look at here. What a good pass. Silvers goes up and finishes it all. 5.47, that's the time remaining in the basketball game. East Tennessee took the lead late in the first half. They have not relinquished it. Got to remember, they're doing all this with Greg Dennis sitting on the sideline. You make a decision. How long do you go without Dennis? But look here. East Tennessee State currently on an 8-0 run. That kind of situation makes that coaching decision a lot easier. With 11-point lead, they can leave him on the bench longer. Well, in the first half, as Wilson gets through, missed the layup. Cowper with a rebound. In the first half, English was on the bench. Dennis played well. Now Dennis is in foul trouble, and English is part of that 8 nothing run. East Tennessee State by 11. Their second 11-point lead as Talford has it to Silver. Chattanooga on the other end needs someone to step up and help Nelson because it's just looking like for Chattanooga, it's Nelson or nothing. Five minutes to go. East Tennessee State being very deliberate now. 11 seconds. Trezell Silvers from us. Oh, <laughs> Almost a three. Not quite. Well, we did his game. East Tennessee State at Raleigh against North Carolina State. He played very well there, and he's picking it up right where he left off in Raleigh. 
The foul is on Trezell Silvers. Well, Keith Nelson has fought with just about everybody here tonight, <laughs> except you and me. I tell you, Keith They've been a, on him. Exactly. And this is supposed to be a no-contact no sport, but Keith Nelson has is, is got everybody's autograph out there tonight. Silvers was the latest person who really bodied up very strongly on Nelson. Marty Story looked at the official and he said, hey, I got everything under control. 4.43 to go in the basketball game. Boy, this has been a great game. Nelson at the line. He'll get two shots. The two-shot bonus is in effect for UT Chattanooga. What a great game tonight, Nelson. 18 points, eight rebounds. you got to remember, he played a lot of minutes uh, with uh, looking at two fouls in the first half, and then the third foul was picked up quickly in the second. Nelson got it. UT Chattanooga coming into this ball game 11-0 this season at the UTC Arena. They're down 12 right now. And the least, time is running out. Beat some very good teams here. Beat a good Auburn team right here. Beat Southern Mississippi right here. And a good uh, Milwaukee team. A University of Wisconsin's Milwaukee. Rizal Silvers tried to go inside the Calford, and Kelly Sutton comes out of there with the ball. That's a fifth turnover in the second half that he's forced. Sam Brooks missed the three. Niblett gets the long rebound. Last trip down, Randy, East Tennessee State. Not the last trip, trip before. They took 30 seconds, uh, 37 seconds off the clock before they shot. Patience. Oh, oh what a foul. Marty Story clobbered. He'll get two shots. They ran over the ball boy. <laughs> nobody, nobody saved here. Sutton. Sutton gets all of this foul. Look at Sutton coming to help right here against Marty Story. And this is... <laughs> That's a big foul. Marty Story gets the worst end of that one. <laughs> Kelly Sutton gets his fourth foul. Two players for the box on the floor right now have four. That's Wilson and Sutton. Something else you got to think about. If Chattanooga loses here tonight, they're going to face Monday night Appalachian State, who I understand won today. And uh, is that right? They won today. And they're, they're the only team prior to the night that had beaten Chattanooga. That one rolled in, 72-59. East Tennessee State equals its biggest lead now at 13. We're under four minutes to go. <laughs> Kelly Sutton missed the shot. Story to Niblick. Chattanooga can't buy a bucket right now. And Ron Wilson is fouled out of the game. Appalachian State won at Western Carolina today, 82 to 79. We're going to see right here, pretty good pass by Niblett down in the front court, and Silvers, who's played an outstanding second half, picks up the foul against Wilson. Wilson sits down with five. Larry Stewart will check in for him for UT Chattanooga. People actually starting to head for the exits here with three minutes and 40 seconds. I've seen a lot of crazy things in this game of basketball. I don't think I'd be leaving right now. 14-point Buccaneer lead now. 73-59. Silvers will get another. He rolled them both in. Buccaneers by 15. UTC has gone cold from the field. Sutton looks for Nelson. He's the guy they got to go to. He missed it. Sutton missed the tip. Kept alive. And it will go to East Tennessee State. Now they change their mind and give it to UT Chattanooga. Rodney Eagley said to us <laughs> over here, I didn't touch it. I didn't touch it. LeVert three inbounds. Bucks are on a 13 to one run. Primarily because Chattanooga just really has not been able to score. And uh, they've had some pretty good shots at the goal. Sutton. They look for Nelson. Sutton for three. Short. Whistle and a foul. Oh against East Tennessee State's Rodney English. And that's going to be a two-shot foul because every foul now is a two-shot situation with both teams 
right at 10 fouls. Silvers gets his third foul. Greg Dennis is up. He's coming back in with 3.05 to go. He's got four. But when he went out, it was a pretty close game. And this East Tennessee State team has so many good athletes. When one gets in foul trouble, somebody else picks up the slack. Well, they got a lot of talent, a lot of arsenal. Allen LaForce has had that now for two years, and he's some good, good talented people. And talking about the crowd, you know, Randy, last year, I saw a play. We did a game with the East Tennessee State at Cincinnati. We did a game at Memphis State. It just doesn't seem to, to, to bother them that they play in a hostile environment with uh, 10, 11,000 people. Now, Nelson wants to wipe his hands off. He made the first free throw. 3.05 to go. It's a 14-point ball game. Nelson got it. East Tennessee by 13 with three minutes to go. Now we will just watch them milk the clock, take about 40 seconds off on each possession unless they get a layup. Well, they've spread them out now. There's Niblett splitting, coming back outside. Good job of getting the ball back out by Niblett. Good decision. And there's a foul by Keith Nelson. That's a fourth foul on Nelson. And Greg Dennis will be at the line for the one and one. His fourth, team ten. Fourth foul on Keith Nelson, ten team fouls, and he'll have two shots. That's going to be big down the stretch for East Tennessee because as a team, they shoot 71% from the free throw line. Dennis makes the first one. This really heats up this conference race because this gives Chattanooga two losses facing Appalachian State in a Monday night game and still got to go to Furman. I tell you, this thing is still up for grabs. Well, this game is, too. We got a lot of time left. Even though it's a 15-point lead, you got three Sutton. Those guys can shoot from three. They better start putting it up quickly. 76-61. They're going to have to go for the three to try to get back close. Sutton splits the lane beautifully. The rebound goes to Talford. Dennis gets it out quickly. He better be smart. He'll hold up. If he doesn't hold up, he's going to charge. But look at here. He's going to take it. Oh. The foul will be against LaVert Greece. And Greg Dennis calmly walks away and goes to the free throw line. You know what? The, every player out there who has fouled tonight, most situations, they've got the best of their foul opportunity. Into the ball game now for UT Chattanooga is Shane Neal, 6'2, 150 pound freshman, but he's a 50% three point shooter. That's why he's in there. Looks like Pete Maravich a little bit. English was guarding Nelson that last trip. He's a fifth player to guard Keith Nelson. Keith will sleep very well tonight. Can't say enough about Brooks also. Played tonight after not practicing all week. Greg Dennis just had an outstanding game here tonight. Turned it up a notch. We said he had to menace the moccasins, and he did a good job tonight, especially 27 points now, and set a lot of minutes because of foul trouble. 27 for Dennis, 17-point lead for East Tennessee State. On the block, Nelson got the dunk, and East Tennessee really didn't want to foul him there. They just let him go. Shane Neal is guarding Jason Niblett. Look at Greg Dennis at 6'11 out helping Niblett in the backcourt. Niblett in trouble. There's Talford with it. 22 seconds on the shot clock. A minute 40 in the ballgame. And a technical foul will be assessed against UT Chattanooga. Mac wanting a charge on that situation when Niblett went in, lost control. And Mac thought he charged. He got out of the coaching box. And that's the reason why you got to touch. Two shots for Calvin Talford. He missed the first. He'll get another. Boy, 
the Southern Conference race is a dandy now, isn't it? Now, yeah, really. Appalachian State, Furman still in there. You better believe it. Both these teams still have to play Appalachian State. East Tennessee has to play them on the road in Boone. The Mocs have them here. And then, of course, UTC still has to go to Furman. So exactly. we could have another log jam when tournament time comes around. Last year, we had a three-way tie for the championship. Wouldn't surprise me if you didn't have that same situation again this year. The foul will be on Kelly Sutton. That will be his fifth. The second moccasin to foul out of the ball game. And back to the line for East Tennessee State will be Calvin Talford, who had one out of two of the technicals a moment ago. East Tennessee State just done a really good job tonight, not really stopping Nelson, but just trying to contain him. And they really pressured the perimeter, and that's what we thought they had to do. They've taken the crowd out of the game, and, uh, you know, really the crowd has not even been a factor, especially in the second half. One minute, 32 seconds to go. Calvin Talford with 13 tonight. He has 14. And it's an 18-point Buccaneer lead. This one is all but over. A lot of Chattanooga people are heading for the exit. Meanwhile, the folks from Johnson City upstairs are all standing to their feet. Dennis with a rebound on the midst by Lavert Brees. Jason Niblett weaving in and out. Dennis. Alfred, 26 on the shot clock, a minute left in the ball game. Done a real good job with this delay game. Niblett splits the seams, comes out of there. There's the foul. No foul. Nelson got the steal and the dunk. Thirty-three seconds to go of the ball game. Nelson's a great player, isn't he? We just got through saying they were handling that delay pretty good. And Nelson comes out in the passing lane, steals it, goes down and dunks it. Dennis gets the dunk, but first there's the foul. <laughs> That's time for the Olive Garden shot of the game. It's by a fairly unlikely source for East Tennessee, but a lot of folks have played well. And we're talking about Drizelle Silver for East Tennessee State, who hit a big bucket on one of that 13-1 run for East Tennessee State. That sealed it. That was a big pass right there. Drizelle, a little reverse layup. He has played an outstanding game in the second half. A lot of people many folks up in Johnson City. You see them right here. They're standing in a roundhouse. I guarantee there's a lot of people in Johnson City that are happy tonight. A lot of folks checking in. Niblett will sit down. Dennis will probably come out after he goes to the line. What a game Greg Dennis has played tonight for East Tennessee State. All season long, Alan LaForce has been looking for somebody to step to the front and be a leader. And tonight it was Greg Dennis. Real, very, very impressed with the effort tonight by the big man. Dennis got another free throw, 82-65. Dennis makes a pair. There are your credits, your executive producer, Alicia Kibligan. Dan Shoemaker, Skip Hill. There's our other folks who have made this one possible. UTC is going to play it in. 20 seconds to go. 83-65. East Tennessee has come to Chattanooga and done it. Reach misses the three. Stewart misses. Reach gets the meaningless bucket with seven seconds. the ball game 83 67 a big big win for east tennessee state as you see alan laforce and just to every